When presented with any offer, saying yes at first sight can be very expensive. When it comes to your salary and compensation, it can mean that you're saying no to your well-being, your personal finances, and your professional development. Welcome back to another episode at 5-Minute Career Hack where we are discussing salary negotiations. Now, I'm no basketball guru, but I am an expert at watching documentaries and true crime TV. I want to know what, why, how, and when things are happening. As a Chicago native, I love the 90s Bulls, so my most watched documentary of all time is The Last Dance. I talked about it in episode 29. Today, I will use the story of Scottie Pippen as an example of why saying yes at first sight has consequences. Scottie was the number two player during his time in the league, but he was the 111th highest paid. He signed a contract for $18 million over the span of six years when he started his career. Now, while he was able to negotiate that after four years, his decision to say yes at first sight impacted his negotiating power for all contracts after that. This talented basketball star was not educated about what he could actually be paid. He was not confident in his alternative options, and he was focused on what was right in front of him, and that was the need to take care of his family today. This decision followed him for the rest of his basketball career and to this day, with his net worth being lower than other basketball players of his caliber. It even impacted his behavior and performance at times. Scotty attests to the lessons that he's learned from this experience during the last dance. There are absolutely consequences to not negotiating. So I wanna share my top three with you and then leave you with some tips for negotiating your own salary or raise. The first consequence is financial and I'll use a simple mathematical example. You accept a $50,000 salary with a 5% raise each year to yield $77,566 after 10 years. Negotiate your starting salary up to 55,000 to yield $85,325 after 10 years with the same raise. The difference over the 10 years is almost $63,000 in your pocket for the same job. Let that sink in. The next consequence is performative. Your finances will influence your job satisfaction and your performance capacity. You may not be working to your fullest potential and or you are likely dealing with some subconscious regret for not negotiating your salary. As a lowball recipient, you may be motivated and driven to get to your desired pay rate, but the toll that this can take on your psyche and your physical health is absolutely consequential. Number three, growth trajectory. When you don't negotiate or at least learn to, you miss out on opportunities to raise your comfort level with risk taking, navigate uncomfortable conversations, and just an opportunity to practice advocating for yourself. Salary.com reported that 37% of employees negotiate their salary. So I'm gonna give you five tips to get on the right side of this statistic. Number one, don't say yes at first sight. You may be saying, oh, it's more than I've ever seen, or I just really need the money, or you may even talk yourself into taking it so you can get your foot in the door. Uh... Employers are never offering the top of the band, most times not even the middle, and Career Builder reports that 70% of employers expect candidates to negotiate the first offer. You can ask for time to review the offer with your family or financial advisors, and you specify a time frame to get back with them within reason so you can count it. Now is the time to make an informed decision, not an emotional one. Consider total compensation. You're not just negotiating base salary. Consider line items like 401k, benefits, vacation and time off, sign-on bonuses, stock options, remote hybrid work, titles, you name it. When you are reviewing the offer, add a dollar value to these components and include this in your negotiation conversation. Number three, be your own public relations. This is not the time to be moderate. You need to articulate how you are going to add value to the organization and how much is it worth. 
How are you going to perform against the job descriptions? You need to be clear here and use examples of previous high performance to tag a dollar value to your net worth. Use examples of your previous high performance, how your skills, knowledge, and experience attached to a, a goal of the organization and how much does it cost. Attach a dollar value to it. Number four, don't feel pressure to share your pay expectations first. When asked this question, you can respond with, I love to learn more about the role, responsibilities, and the team before discussing money. But may I ask what your salary range is that you're considering for this position? Or you can share your range that interests you, but just be sure that your top number is not your minimum expectation. Number five, check your emotions at the door. Asking during the process is essential, but asking with confidence, facts, and practical logic keeps the conversation moving forward. You must be prepared, gather your data and information, and practice. Alicia shared great tips on gathering data in the last episode. You can practice in the mirror with your career coach, 5-Minute Career Hack is here for you, or with a trusted accountability partner. Remember, it's not a battle, it's a learning experience that can lead to greater performance, higher emotional intelligence, and can open the door for more financial and developmental growth down the line.